You're listening to Policy Currents, a weekly podcast from the RAND Corporation. I'm Evan Banks. And I'm Deanna Lee. Every Friday, we bring you new insights from RAND's latest research and commentary. It's November 19th. Both Russia and China used their authoritarian power over the media to manipulate news about COVID-19 and advance their political goals. A new RAND report identifies these subversive efforts. The authors find that Russia advanced anti-U.S. conspiracy theories about the virus. Meanwhile, China has pursued efforts to improve perceptions of its pandemic response. And both countries used media to oppose public health measures, which directly threatened global health and well-being. The researchers identified these patterns using a scalable infrastructure that captured and analyzed an enormous amount of news articles, as well as machine learning and other data analysis tools. This was a proof-of-concept study, and it provides a potential blueprint for creating a public system that can detect manipulation of the news at the global scale. In fact, the authors recommend that the U.S. government consider supporting the establishment of such a system to help address the spread of disinformation from malicious state actors. Does America's increasingly uncivil behavior mean the U.S. is headed toward a second civil war? According to Rand's Brian Michael Jenkins, this is a threat that cannot be dismissed. America suffers from a growing list of societal and political conditions that have eroded our sense of community and made the country more predisposed to violence. At the top of this list, Jenkins says, is increased polarization in our political system. Polarization is a trend that began in the 1970s and now manifests in the demonization of political opponents as primal enemies. Polarization has contributed to the degradation of political discourse It has discouraged ordinary people from entering public service, while at the same time attracting zealots, and it has made harassment of and threats of violence against public officials more common. And to make matters worse, the COVID-19 pandemic has exacerbated existing political divisions. But despite all this, civil war is not inevitable. Jenkins says that it's unlikely that America's current environment will lead to a conflict breaking out between the states. A more likely scenario is, quote, a turbulent era of civil disturbances, armed confrontations, standoffs, threats, assassination attempts, and other acts of political violence. In other words, one that is a lot like the last 200 years of American history. Temporary safety net measures were enacted during the pandemic to help prevent widespread loss of health insurance coverage. A new RAND study shows that these policies, which included the Medicaid disenrollment freeze and employer-provided furlough coverage, did what they were designed to do. They ensured that people could keep their health care coverage when faced with job losses or other economic hardships. Our findings also show that provisions of the Affordable Care Act alone might not have been enough to fully prevent massive insurance loss. This evidence is extremely timely, because lawmakers are currently discussing whether they should make some of the temporary pandemic-related safety net measures permanent. According to our researchers, this new study suggests that doing this could help stabilize insurance coverage during future recessions. There is great interest in attracting talented and underrepresented individuals into public sector jobs. But college graduates may not be considering these career paths. And government agencies may not be doing all that they can to attract the next generation of workers. What could be done to address this? Findings from a new RAND report that examines the public sector workforce in Southern California point toward two key areas to focus on. Increasing underrepresented students' awareness of public sector opportunities, and making public sector organizations themselves more diverse. In order to reach these goals, some major barriers must be overcome. For example, currently, internships for public sector careers may not be equitably publicized, which limits the diversity of the applicant pool. 
Another challenge is that agencies, colleges, and students all tend to rely on informal connections and personal networks for recruiting. But these informal networks often connect people of similar characteristics, thus excluding people from traditionally underrepresented backgrounds. And finally, government hiring processes are often very lengthy and complicated, which may also limit the pool of applicants. If stakeholders work together to address these issues, it could help bring a diverse pool of talent into public sector careers, careers that are integral to supporting and improving communities across the country. There are many reasons to worry about increased Russian threats in Ukraine. That's according to Rand's William Courtney. The troubling signs include military shifts, a recent relocation of Russian tanks to Ukraine's border, for example, as well as substantial movement of Russian forces and strong criticisms of Ukraine by the Kremlin. If these threats were to escalate, there are ways that the U.S. and its NATO allies could provide support. One may be supplying Ukraine with more lethal weaponry. Another is for NATO to further reinforce defenses in the Baltics. And a third is to impose tougher sanctions against Russia. Importantly, Courtney notes that the Kremlin's intentions remain unclear. It's possible that Moscow seeks only to discourage further U.S. and NATO military support for Ukraine. But one thing is certain, he says, the West will be watching. RAND is a nonprofit institution that helps improve policy and decision making through research and analysis. For more on what we covered this week, check the show notes at rand.org slash podcast. We're off next week. Have a happy and safe Thanksgiving, and we'll be back in your feeds on December 3rd.